Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. Um, you know, I wasn't going to use this at all today, but it was something I was thinking about this morning. It's a very personal thing, but it does connect with what we're about to talk about. Um, today is the fifth anniversary since the day that my father's funeral was. My father died uh, five years ago in on November 29th, and then on December 4th was the day we buried him. Uh, it was really sad. Are you still there, Rowan? Can I hear you? Yes. How come I don't hear you? My headphones. Oh, there you are. There. No, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but anyway, so I'm, and I'm not trying to bring anybody down with my story, but I believe that he went on. I believe in in heaven. I believe that there is life after death. Uh, and um, I will tell you, I believe it. I, if I tell you I know it, I'll be lying to you because I've never been there. But Bill Weiss might know. I hope I'm saying his last name correctly. He'll correct me in just a second. He's been with us before. He's got a new book. It's called What Happens When I Die? true stories of the afterlife and what they tell us about eternity. Uh, Bill describes himself, or at least his publicity says, he's a dedicated Christian, a teacher, a worship leader, a New York Times best-selling author. His last book is popular in Robin's uh, Sunday School class, you were telling me, right? And what was the name of that book again? 23 Minutes in Hell. 23 Minutes in Hell, yeah. For those of you who listen all the time, you probably remember that title. Bill Weiss, good morning, Bill. How you doing? Great. How about you, Larry, Robin? Thank you so much. An honor to be with you. And it's an honor to have you. And please tell me if I'm saying your name right or wrong. Uh, it's close. It's Weiss. Weiss. Okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, and I, oh, should, okay. I, I should have known that. I had the choice in my mind. One or the other. I knew it was one or the other. Where are you right now? Where are you calling from? Well, we're in California at the moment. Okay. Well, thank you for getting up early. Do you know, when, when the subtitle says true stories of the afterlife, that's going to get some people raising their eyes. How do you have true stories from people who are no longer with us? Well, these are, these are people that had near-death experiences, uh, most of them, or clinical death experiences. Okay. So they reported what they saw. So they, most of them, uh, a good many of them are still with us. Do you know one of one they, of they deported what they saw? Okay, I got gotcha. you. I, I just wanted to make sure that was understood. The and I, and I, in fact, I knew that. I just wanted to make sure you said it. Right, that's the, a good question. There was there was a, a an interview we did uh, with an author who talked to children who had near death experiences, and the children, uh, for the most part, hadn't really been indoctrinated into any religion. Either they their their families weren't religious, they didn't send them to Sunday school, or they were just too young and they never got to that mm-hmm. point when, when they had their, their experiences. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting to, to read what those children reported, which was similar to what people who've had experiences that we've heard about. They see the light, they see uh, a figure who they describe that to me sounds like Jesus in, in many cases, mm-hmm. or, or relatives. So what, what, right. what did these people say and how did you find these people? Well, there's, there's hundreds of books actually written about this. Uh, many of them are doctors. One is Dr. Maurice Rawlings. Uh, he's just one of the many that have written books. He was an atheist, and he had many of his patients that uh, were near death that were either saw heaven or hell, so he began investigating, and he investigated over 3,000 cases uh, and documented them in his books. Well, there's many other doctors or other people that have written books also about near-death experiences or clinical death, uh, that people have had and what they saw <clears throat> in heaven or hell. And many of them, you know, were all different religions. Some were atheists and all different walks of life. Right, right. So <clears throat> most of them reported the same thing, you know, that they saw heaven or hell. And their description is, is matches up with most of the people. Uh, they've all say it roughly the same thing. So, so was, that's where this started. <laughs> so was there an an, obser- an observable consistency, in other words, regarding um, what happens based on how you've lived your life? Did the people who went to hell have no religion, and the people who did have a religion went to heaven, or was it not necessarily broken down that way? Yes, it was. The, the people that saw hell were people that either had no religion or they had a religion other than Christianity, or they were just atheists. So that was the consistency. Uh, the uh, the ones that saw heaven were all Christian. So that was the difference. Uh, that's the majority. Now, there were some that saw a light and were heading towards a light that were not Christian. But uh, the, there's two answers for that question, because many people say, I saw this light and I felt this peace. Right. But the ones that went further along that road, they finally got to a point where they were sent off 
in another direction and then headed to hell. So the ones that just didn't get that far all went toward the light. But in Ecclesiastes, it says that the spirit of man returns unto God in Ecclesiastes 12 and so forth. So I believe that all of us head towards God, but then we're sent off in the direction that we're supposed to go, heaven or hell. So that was the difference of the now, what, Help me understand this. This is more theological maybe than what the book is specifically about. But what is the difference between being a Christian and believing in Christ? Uh, well, there's really no difference. A Christian is someone that believes in Christ, that has repented of their sins, and just received Him as their Lord and Savior. Oh, okay. Well, that's, and, and that's maybe I maybe because when like when you hear about a Messianic Jew, mm -hmm. like they'll say they believe in in Christ, but they d right, but right. they don't consider themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not true. Uh, Do uh, Sid Roth is one of the biggest people on TV in America. Uh, he's a, 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 a was a Jew. Uh, devout Jew, and he became a Christian. So he is now a born again Christian, but uh, a Messianic Jew. So that's what he calls himself. Ah, okay. When when you hear uh, the uh, recanting of stories from people that they mm -hmm. say happened to them, how do you believe what they're saying? Because sometimes people will just yeah. say say something and pretend it happened when it actually did not. Right, a good question. Well, you know, you have to discern. Some of them are false and uh, or emotional or maybe they're from a drug-related or something. But there's many that are reported by the doctors that said these are credible people. They were not on drugs of any kind, any hallucination type of drug. Uh, and what they reported, if it lines up with the Scripture also, the Bible, uh, then that will give you a strong evidence that what they saw is true. Because you have to go by what the Bible says in the end. Uh, that's the credible thing we are to believe, not people's experiences. But the ones that lined up with Scripture, which were the majority, that were credible people. They weren't people that were just crazy people. Uh, you know, so those people, you can read their whole story in all these different books. No, and the majority no. saw heaven or hell and, and said the same thing. Well, it is a fascinating topic. Uh, Bill Weiss is our guest. He's the author of the book called What Happens When I Die, True Stories of the Afterlife and What They Tell Us About Eternity. Are there any stories of somebody who um, died t twice, to, so to speak, and, and, the, and after the first one they actually became more religious, and then their second report was different than their first report? Um, there, was, there was one or two I can recall. I mean, there's been so many I read about, but there was one man that died twice. Uh, the doctor was secretating him. Uh, one time he went, he was going towards hell and he was terrified when he came back, he, uh, found out what it was to become a Christian. He accepted the Lord. He died again and they resuscitated him. And this time he saw heaven. So there was one or two of those cases. So that's unusual to see both places and have a change like that. Uh, there was another man, a doctor who was high in the political realm in Oklahoma and, and he was an atheist. He was slipping out of his body, dying of a disease, and he was headed towards hell. And the doctor resuscitated him, and he, he came back and he said he was absolutely terrified, never experienced such fear, and he thought about one friend that used to witness to him and tell him about Jesus. And he said to himself, what is saved? What, what is a born again? What does that mean? So he asked the doctor to send for his friend. He came. And his friend explained to him what it meant to be a Christian. He accepted the Lord and became a Christian because he was so terrified he didn't want to ever go to that place again. Wow. So, wow. anyway, many of those types of cases. So, did you, the, the interviews that you conducted for the book, were they face to face? Was it over, over the internet? How did you do this? No, no. Uh, many of them I met, I have met uh, in my travel. Uh, others have written me and shared with me their experience, and I talked to them on the phone. And then others I wrote, I read about in books and just summarized a lot of these stories out of books that are already documented. So did, so that did, was the, did, did I share 34 true stories. Oh, 34. Wow. So now when we hear stories of people who see relatives, we've heard those before too. Did the people that you interviewed see relatives? And if so, did they see them in heaven? And and did those rel in other words, if if I go to heaven, let's say, if, how do I ask right. this question? If I go to heaven, yeah, will I only right. see the relatives that had accepted Jesus, or am I going to see 
I, see, I'm confused about this. Who will no, I? Okay, I'll make it clear. Yeah, who? you will see rel- You will only see relatives that have become Christian. The rest of them you will not see because they won't be in heaven. Does that include babies and that never had a chance? No, 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 no. Baby, babies will be in heaven. Okay. Because Jesus said, "Permit the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven." He said, "Unless you accept heaven like a little child, you'll not enter in." Hmm. So he gave many verses about that. Children do go to heaven. There's that one verse I'm kind of confused about in the Bible. It says something about uh, woe to the uh, women who are pregnant and then Jesus comes. I mean, what does that exactly mean? It just seems like uh, they're not going to heaven. No, no, no. He was talking about when he when he comes back in the tribulation time, at the end of the tribulation. Well, he comes back actually at the beginning for the rapture, but it's another subject, but when, it's going to be such terror on the earth at that time that he's saying that people that are pregnant, you're, you're going to have a hard time running and fleeing, uh, oh. getting away from the horror uh, that's, that's going to be c- come on you because of the evil that's going to be in the world. So we just talking about you're not able to run. You're going to have a hard time getting away. Oh. That, that's what that's I'll, never, oh, okay. I'll never be pregnant, but I'll have a hard time running. <laughs> I think I'll have a hard time. Uh, so, yeah. so the, the books. What happens when I die? Tell, tell us. Um, what happens? Uh, what well, happens beyond the light? Okay, so you said you see the light, and then you're given a choice. You go left or right, or up or down. Well, you're not given. No, you're not given a choice. You're not given a choice. You're told which way you're going. Because oh, okay. it's too late. After you, after you die, it's too late. You have to make the decision now. Okay. If you receive Jesus or not, you know, and and he gives people a chance all their life you know, to choose. And because God loves man, he gives us a free will. So we choose. Do we believe the Bible or don't we? And so that's the bottom line. But go ahead. You were you were getting to a question there. Well, the question was, I was just going to ask you to tell us some of the stories of the people who got the deepest, you know, the, the ones who really got into it before they had to be called back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I do have a question about this. This is more mm-hmm. the- theological than anything. But why... If there's eternity in hell as a possible penalty, why did God make it so hard to accept this? I mean, it's it's almost impossible to say for sure that you know anything about religion. You can live a good life. You know, you can believe in the teachings of Jesus. You can say, you know, I believe we should tr- treat each other with respect. I you can say, you know, I believe we should love one another. We shouldn't kill one another. We, I can believe all of that things. I'm, I'm agreeing with everything Jesus ever said, uh, and and never maybe take that one extra step and say, I believe he rose from the dead and therefore saved our sins. Maybe you just don't accept that part, but everything else in your life, you're really in agreement with him. Why would God make that person spend eternity in hell? I'd, I'll see. That's the part I don't understand. Well, he gives you a free will to choose. He said. Unless a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. John 3.3. 3. So he made it clear. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Yeah, but why? I, I unless guess... a man repent, he said, because... I'm not really... I, I, and... Please don't, don't think I'm arguing with you. I'm really trying no, to... No, no, argue. no. I like, I, I like you asking this. I'm really because... trying to understand this. Why... If, if, I've, if I'm in charge, and, and I'm not trying here's, to... Here's why. I, I can give you an answer. I can give you an answer. See, because... We are all, all of us are born in sin, okay, because we, we all sin, all of us sin. So sin separates us from God, and he told Adam, don't sin because I, you can't live with me in heaven because heaven's perfect and I'm perfect, and I will not allow any sin into heaven. So don't sin. Well, man decided to sin anyway. So now because it's, we separated ourselves from God, he has to redeem us back to himself. And the only way is if if we he, he, we would accept his son because the penalty for our sin is death, which death means separation from God. But Jesus said, I'll pay the penalty for you. If you acknowledge that I did that, I'll pay your penalty so that you won't have to be separated from me. And if you accept me, I'll consider your trust in me as if you never sinned. So, I'll consider you believe in me as 
as if you were righteous. So the, what was so, the what was the first sin? What it wasn't an apple. What what actually was it that Eve and Adam did that was so bad that that caused damnation for the entire human race? What did they actually do? They they said, "Don't partake of this tree. Don't listen. Don't partake of this tree. Okay, just don't do it." That's all I told them to do. Don't do it. Well, Satan came along and said, oh, no, you can partake of the tree. Uh, you'll become God just like he is. And he lied to, to man. Right, right. And man, and man said, okay, I guess, okay, I'll believe you. So he chose right. to believe the devil instead of God. God just yeah. gave him one simple order, one thing. Just don't eat of this one tree. You can eat of every other tree. Just don't do this one. And the reason was, he said, that tree contained the knowledge of good and evil. Man did not know what evil was back then. He didn't even know what evil was. Because God, it, it was not put in his mind to even know what evil was. No, I think, he gave, I, think no, he no, I think no other creature on earth knows what evil is. Other animals will eat other animals, but they really don't understand evil. I think that's exactly true. We, we got it. We as human beings know what it is, but I, I just, I guess, right. I don't understand why we are, I don't understand it. I don't understand why we would be put into such a predicament in the very beginning where we could have this temptation right before us and there's another creature living with us who's going to tempt us in such a horrible, with such horrible consequences. I don't even understand well, why that was even allowed. Well, mm -hmm. well, because, see, love gives a choice. You don't force your wife to love you. You give her a choice, right? She loves you because she wants to. Well, he says, don't, don't disobey me. Well, he gave man a choice. So if man loves God, he'd say, hey, I don't want to offend God. He just told me not to do this. Right, right. So I'm not going to offend him. I'm going to do, I'm going to honor him so and respect him and, and do what he says. So man blows it. But now God had a plan to redeem man back. In spite of man not listening, God said, I'll die a horrible death. That's the penalty for your sin. It's so serious to me that it deserves a really severe punishment. Mm -hmm. But I'll take the punishment for you. But man says, you know what? I don't believe that Jesus did that. I just don't believe it. And well, so I believe he, he did. I, I do believe he did. The whole Jesus story does make sense to me, actually. But I just, right, but right. I, but what I guess I don't understand is why this was all set up this way in the first place. I mean, I, I, I say I know so many Jewish people. Question. I know well, so many Jewish people who are the sweetest people. They don't believe that Jesus died for their sins, um, but right, they, but they, but they believe everything. That Jesus teaches, they believe they talk, talk the same talk that Jesus talked, and, right, well, and, and so I don't. That's, and that's what and I guess that's what I don't understand. Why would they be cast into hell? It doesn't make any sense to me. Because they don't have a new nature. They're not. See, the new nature comes from our trust in Jesus is the Son of God, and He died for us. Then He gives us a new nature that would be compatible to live with God. See, His nature is not compatible. It says He's fire. His nature is fire. Like, if I stuck my hand in the fire to retrieve something and it burned me, I wouldn't say, why did that fire burn me? That was mean in that fire. I wouldn't say that. Why? Because the nature of the fire is to burn. Well, God's nature is to consume sin. So we can't live with God the way we are in our sinful mm. nature. He has to give us a new nature. And that new nature only comes through a trust. So he says, do you trust me? Do you believe I died in your place? And people say, no, I don't believe that. Well, I, I think all roads lead to God. We went on a real interesting tangent, but we I'm not being fair to the book. I just want to say one more thing, and then I, w I really want to go back to the book. Yeah. I, I am not as holy as some of my Jewish friends. I don't understand why I would be allowed in, and my Jewish friends that I'm referring See, to because, wouldn't because be. Because you're comparing, you're thinking of good, that good will get you to heaven. And see, good doesn't get you to heaven for two reasons. Number one, you know, the best person on the earth is not good enough to get into heaven because God's standard is not like ours. Yeah, I, I his, get. his standard is perfect. He said we have to be perfect. Well, none of us are perfect, so thank God it's not based on being good. It's based on relationship. Thank God, yeah. That's a good choice of words. Okay, uh, Bill, uh, let's talk about the book. The book is called What Happens okay. When I Die? True Stories of the Afterlife, and, yeah. and I'm sure this is going to be hugely comforting for many people, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Was it comforting for you to hear these stories? Well, I already know the truth because I know the Bible. I believe the, um, every word of it. But and I so I know there's a heaven and a hell. I don't have to see it to know it. Uh -huh. I just know it from the Bible. But then you, know, you hear all these stories and know there's thousands of them, literally thousands of people that have seen heaven or hell. So it's not something that's just a one or two. The many credible people, doctors and credible people that have seen it. 
So yes, it is comforting. And the people that went to heaven saw their relatives. Uh, 90 Minutes in Heaven, Don Piper, who wrote the famous book, 90 Minutes in Heaven, uh, he died. He was with his relatives in heaven. And he said, it's the most glorious place. You're going to love it. Your body's perfect. Everything's perfect in heaven. And you get to be with your friends and loved ones that knew Jesus, everyone that was saved, and, and many other people that have documented this. So you know there is an afterlife, but the Bible says there is. And uh, I, I write about a lot more in the book besides mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. So there's other things in there, too. Tell me, I, t- I talk about different religions and so forth and what they believe about heaven or hell and the difference why Christianity is unique, why you should believe that over all the other religions. I, I give seven different reasons why and so forth. So Bill, Bill tell, us a, tell us one of the stories that is your favorite in the book. Um, well, I like the, the, the man that saw the heaven and hell, the man that accepted Jesus after he saw hell, uh-huh. and uh, and I, that was a powerful story. And uh, there's there's so many. There's another man that was an atheist that was in an ambulance dying of a disease, and he he died, and they resuscitated him. But he saw hell, and he saw, and he was actually allowed to see some of his friends that he hung out with that were drug dealers and uh, you know into a really rough life, and he saw his friends, and they said. They called out his name. They said, Ronnie, don't come here. If you come here, you can't get out. You'll never get out. You'll be in torment forever. And he saw him burning in flames. And he said he was so terrified. Hmm. When he came back, he thought, what do I do to get saved? How do I become a Christian? And uh, so he became a Christian. And he was a hardcore bad guy. Uh, and he really a powerful story about wow. what his wow. life was like before. And so he changed drastically. And it took a lot to get him to change because he hung out with the worst of the worst. He did all kinds of things, and, uh, you know, bad things in life. So mm-hmm. and he's a powerful story, and many others like that. So it'll shake you up to realize, hey, what the Bible says is true. Just check out what the Scripture says. Avoid hell. He made it easy. All we have to do is say, hey, I'm sorry for my sins, and I received Jesus. He is the Son of God. He's the only way to heaven. It couldn't have made it much easier, yeah, you know? I guess so. Is the book yeah. available as an e-book? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and, and, and do you have... all bookstores. And, and in regular books. And do you have a website you want to tell us about? Yeah, sure. It's 23minutesinhell.com. The numeral, 23minutesinhell.com. Okay. So you can get it there. And, and all our information is up there. And also on YouTube. You can go to YouTube, Bill Weiss TV on YouTube and... I've got all kinds of information up there and videos and things you can them watch. Uh-huh. And, and you, is soulchoiceministries.com, is that your website also? Yes, either one will get you there, soulchoiceministries.com. Okay, got it. I, that's the one we have listed here. Uh, Bill, always fascinating chatting with you, and uh, you are doing very well what you do very well, which is to teach us, and, and I appreciate that, Bill. Well, uh, thank- well, I appreciate your questions. I really liked your questions. I thought it was great, and... Wish we had more time to go on because we can give people answers, but you had great questions there. Thank you for Well, thank you, and thank you for getting up early uh, to be with us. Have a great Christmas. Thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Honored to be with you. Thanks so much. All right, we'll All take right. a little break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Yvette, and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Frederick's Appliance is located in Bellevue, right over the railroad tracks. Call 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance. So what did you do with your weekend? Me? I was flying. Because I'm taking flying lessons from Ocala Aviation. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, I'd like to give that a shot, but I'm not quite sure. Well, I've got the solution. It's called the Discovery Flight, and that's exactly what it is. It helps you discover the wonder of flying and if it's for you. It's only $99, and it gives you the chance to learn a bit more about the airplane and then actually go for a ride with a flight instructor and take control of the airplane. That's how I got started, and now I'm on my way to being a pilot. I know, scary thought, right? But the demand for qualified pilots is stronger than ever, and with the help of Ocala Aviation, you could make a career change and learn to be a commercial pilot. But it all starts with a discovery flight. So stop by the flight school, conveniently located at the Ocala Airport, visit the website at ocalaaviation.com, or call 861-7484. That's 861-7484. 
Ocala Aviation. Your adventure starts here. Experience Christmas at Gaylord Palms, November 23rd through January 5th with Ice featuring Frosty the Snowman. Join Frosty, everyone's favorite snowman, in a colorfully frozen retelling of this original Christmas classic. Relive your favorite scenes, hand-carved in more than 2 million pounds of ice sculptures and slides, plus the all-new Artisans in Action Live Ice Carving Zone and the awe-inspiring Nativity in Ice. For tickets and packages, visit Christmas at GaylordPalms.com. With Disney Annual Passes, your family can experience magical holidays and excitement at all four Disney parks over and over again. And while lots of Florida residents are enjoying the magic year-round using the monthly payment program, you could win your passes from WOCA The Source. Enter now for your chance to win at WOCA.com and tune in every day for your cue to call in and enter to win four annual passes to Walt Disney World. Daily prizes include $50 Disney gift cards. So log on, tune in, and win from WOCA The Source. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Did you know you can add blueberries to lean ground beef or turkey? The fruit will keep the meat moist, plus you'll sneak more nutrients right into your meals. Did you know all the gadgets we use are now affecting our posture? Technology is turning us into a nation of hunchbacks. To stop the slouching, frequent breaks from our gadgets and hold our heads up. The pathway to success. Support other people's ideas, speak up more often, and always be a good teacher. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Keep up with what's going on in the downtown area with Ocala Downtown Newspaper. Delivering thousands of newspapers to businesses in the downtown area, Ocala Downtown is there to keep you informed. They even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the Downtown Ocala newspaper today. Now read Ocala Downtown newspaper online. News Talk 1370. WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732 8000. 732 8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370. WOCA. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we